Imagine that your name has just been read out. In a few seconds, you have to go on stage and make a presentation. The stage is yours. You stand in the middle and see hundreds of eyes staring at you. Silence. No one talks. You hear only a loud heart beating and feel a lump in your throat. It's time. It's time to speak. It was like a scene from a terrifying movie. Even acting it, I felt hotness. Didn't you? In this presentation, we wanted to tell you that public speaking can be really enjoyable. If we just learn how to do it, public speaking can be very satisfying. It's natural that we stress out when we try the new things. The most of us feel anxiety when we have to talk to the people that we have never talked to before or at first day at new work. We don't know what to expect. And the same feeling we have on the stage, because we are afraid of the audience reaction and if we will remember what to say. It's natural. On the other hand, in the situation that we know very well, we feel much more comfortable. Raise your hand if you know how much is three times seven. And now raise your hand if you know when the Second World War began. And now raise your hand if you know the book with the quote, to be or not to be. That's the question. And now raise your hand if you heard about a Kolb cycle. All these questions refer to the basic knowledge from math, history, literature, and public speaking. Almost all of you knew the answers for the first three questions. Probably you have heard about these issues at school. The last question was the most difficult for you. Even though it is a very easy question for people who deal with public speaking daily. How is it possible that we can calculate very complex mathematical operations? Remember the most important events of the history. Can cite outstanding writers and at the same time don't know how to present our knowledge publicly to make it easy to remember? Because this is what the Kolb cycle is about. On studying at school and college, we spent almost 15 years of our lives. Unfortunately, no one teaches us how to speak publicly, even though we do it almost every day. And this skill is one of the most desired in today's world. After the whole learning period, there is a collision with requirements of the employer and the business world. Somehow during the job interview, no one asks us about the Europe's longest river, but very often there is a question, please tell me something about yourself, or why should we hire you? You are presenting yourself every day, at home, at school, at work. No matter if you say about the research results or the weather, you stand in front of the people, in, and you speak to them publicly, to hundreds of people, as well as to three of them. And public speaking is not only about what you say. It's also about how you say, how you stand, how you move, what clothes you wear. For example, if you take a backpack for a meeting, someone can think that you are a student. Why? Because students usually wear a backpack. That's it. Public speaking is a skill as any other. To be better at this, you need to practice and fight with wrong beliefs which block you before getting on the stage. Both onto the big when we speak to a huge audience and also onto the small where business meetings are conducted. That's why we would like to dispel the five mostly common myths about public speaking 
to make them not stop you from improving your skills in this field. Myth number one. Um, oh, welcome uh, to uh, to presentation. Um, uh, five myths of uh, public speaking. Mm, I, I'm very glad that uh, that you are here. And uh, during this talk, I would like to tell you what um, what, uh, what what stops you from um, making great presentation. Let's see this scene one more time. Welcome to presentation Five Myths of Public Speaking. I'm very glad that you are here. In this presentation, I would like to tell you what stops you from making a great presentation. The most people seem to be believe that they will never be good speakers because they neither have appropriate skills nor talent. When we see a great speaker, we think, wow, he has such a knack for this. Even if you think that you don't have a talent for public speaking, you should remember that it doesn't mean that you will never be able to create engaging presentations. I will tell you a story. There was a man who attended one of our workshops. He was such an introvert. He didn't talk to anyone and during the breaks he put on his earphones just to make sure that no one would talk to him. After some time, he came to us on consultation because, attention, he wanted to perform as a speaker on the one of the biggest marketing conferences in Poland. We knew that we have a lot of work to do. But by regular practices, our client became a public speaker. And now he performs on branch conferences even a few times a month. Daily while working with entrepreneurs on their self-presentation in business, we notice that they are on different progress stages. Nonetheless, it didn't happen that someone didn't work out the great effect. It all depends on the time which you spend on training, because it all can be trained. Myth number two. She's not keeping an eye contact. I think she isn't sure what she's saying. <laughs> she doesn't know what to do with her hands. She completely doesn't know how to gesticulate. Ooh, the font in her presentation is so ugly. Oh, come on, how she's standing. It's totally unprofessional. Oh, she faltered, finally. I've been waiting so long for her mistake. Is it the way that you think while listening to us? No, oof. Despite that, when we are supposed to perform, we think that the audience will analyze any of our steps in such a way. But it doesn't happen. The place on a stage makes us an authority in advance. Exactly, exactly the same as our parents, teachers, doctors, has authority. Similarly, a speaker on stage has an authority. If someone invited him to make a speech, then he had to have a good reason for that. So remember that the audience will be your fan until you say to them that you are a loser. So that's why you need to be confident on stage. And remember that people want to hear you. They want to get to know with your story. And they want you to succeed. It's very rarely that someone cheers on our failure. It's very rarely. And one more thing. Don't try to be perfect on stage. It's not good at all to be ideal. We don't like perfect people. So let yourself make mistakes. Let yourself 
not know answers to any questions. And sometimes you can stumble. If you stumble and then you will laugh it off, then people just will fall in love with you. In the era of social media, where everybody is perfect, the truth is, little, is really precious. So be focused on making relationship with the audience and don't think all the time about your mistakes and what you shouldn't do. Being natural is far more attractive than being perfect. Myth number three. Ladies and gentlemen, I have an honor to introduce Marlena Momot, the CEO of the Autocratia. Mrs. Marlena Momot is a certified trainer. She has more than five years of experience in the field of public speaking. Mrs. Marlena Momot is going to present you a lecture named The Art of Self-Presentation. It's a pleasure. It's a big pleasure to welcome you today. I'm very delighted to stand in front of you and share my knowledge. Public speaking is an art. It's an art which we touch every day in some way. Platon, Seneca, they spoke publicly. Nevertheless, we avoid public speaking. Why? You ask me why? Because of high level of induced stress. One more time, just to remember. High level of induced stress. Thank you. <laughs> no one likes official situations. They are associated with unneeded pomposity. Public speaking is a kind of reflection of ourselves. During the speech, try to make a contact with audience. Show them your personality to make them trust you. Attending workshops or conferences, we not only want to learn something new, but also have fun. Official performances require from audience higher level of attention, so they are more difficult to assimilate. By creating a natural atmosphere during the speech, be an energizer for the audience. Use your voice, gestures, stage space to catch listeners' attention. Change the pace, tell stories, go with it. You are on the stage after all. The way in which we will share our knowledge can make our listeners not lose their concentration even for a second. Myth number four. Fortune favors the brave. Do we have a volunteer in the audience who would like to come on a stage, okay, and answer one of our question? Great. Hi. What's your name? My name is Antonia. Antonia, beautiful name. Antonia, please tell us what did you eat for the breakfast today? And please tell us about it just in 20 seconds, okay? I didn't have breakfast today because I knew that the vega was going to be here, so I didn't eat because I ate too. So, yeah, I didn't have breakfast. I just had coffee, black coffee. Very okay. strong black coffee. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. How did you feel here in stage? Fine. I, li I love public speaking. So Okay. So Great. maybe I'm not a good example, but I love being on stage. So I'm Great. Happy. And tell us, did you have a very detailed plan in which way you wanted to share your speech? No. Okay. Thank you so much. Big applause from the audience. <laughs> and you, did you find any valuable conclusions for yourselves from this improv speech about breakfast? Okay, great. Joanna, yes. Anybody? Okay. Myth number four is the best speeches are improvised. If you decide to fully improvise during your speech, you'll need to know that the best improvisation is the one that is well prepared. If Antonia, if Antonia had some time to think before going on stage, she would be able to think 
how to begin, how to engage the audience, and how to share the idea which is worth spreading. When I'm saying that you shouldn't fully improvise, I don't want you to say that you should learn by heart the whole content of your speech. But writing down the keywords is absolutely needed. Thanks to that, your statements will make a logical wall, not a, a mixture of accidental thoughts. The simple and clearly presented statements are easiest to listen and to remember. If you decide to fully improvise, you can lose yourself with your own digressions. The new treats coming to your mind, not necessarily connected with the main topic, will seem to you amazingly interesting. And in the end, you will not cover the main topic and you will not meet the audience needs. Why? Because you will just forget about it. Or you will not have a time for that. Time. Time and money are extremely precious currencies. And the uh, people coming to your performance, they pay with you with their money or with your, their time. So remember about it and give them a value. Myth number five. Unfortunately, fear for speaking to others is something common. It doesn't matter if we perform on a big stage, in a class, or during a meeting at office. It's also not important how much experienced we are. Public speaking will always be stressful for us. More important is to know how to deal with that stress. Surely, self-confidence is crucial here. To be more confident, you should make a good relationship with yourself. Self-confidence is a self-awareness, awareness of your skills and talents. Your skills and talents help you succeed both professionally and privately. The most important is to be aware of them. Then our, our self-confidence will boost. And thanks to that, our stress will no longer be dangerous for us in any situation of public speaking. Okay, so let's sum up. Myth number, four, number one, good speakers are born speakers. The second one, the audience catches all my mistakes. Number three, I have to be formal because this situation is official. The fourth myth, the best speeches are improvised. And the last one, experienced speakers are not stressed at all. We avoid public speaking like a plague. So how can we feel comfortable in this situation, in the situation which we experience so rarely? In this presentation, we wanted to tell you that public speaking is as often and as important skills as ability to calculate or write. And what is important? It can be learned. Diction, body gestures, language, body language. You can all learn all of this. So many times I heard that Public speaking is one of the most stressful things in human's life. Have you ever heard someone saying, I love public speaking like Antonia today? No, it's so rarely. And even if the second person answers, what, are you crazy? Because in our heads we have so many limiting beliefs. Meanwhile, we present ourselves much more often. Even during the speech, even during the talk with another person. And we would like you to treat performances in such a way. And if you only have a chance to make a presentation in class, to speak about a case, talk to strangers, do it. Do it and collect your experiences. You can train public speaking every day. And hear the proverb, practice makes perfect works perfectly. Thank you. Thank you.